Hi, I'm Scott Butterworth with the ODNR Division of Wildlife, and Wildlife District 2, and we're going to talk about wildlife areas along Lake Erie and the uniqueness of them. We start in Ashtabula County. There are a number of unique habitats over there that are more common in northern Canada. We have the snow belt in Ashtabula County, which stretches all along the 312 miles of the lakeshore of Lake Erie over to the western portion of the area that has a number of important wetlands and oak openings habitats. And all along the way there are public lands available for people to recreate at and are important wildlife habitats to see all the great wildlife species that we have here in Ohio and all the unique habitats that we have along the lakeshore. The ODNR Division of Wildlife manages a number of wildlife areas in Ohio. These are lands that are bought specifically for wildlife and managed specifically for wildlife. They're paid primarily through hunting, fishing, and trapping licenses and also excise tax on hunting and fishing equipment. There are also lands bought with the wildlife income tax checkoff and the bald eagle license plates. And I said these are a number of different habitats. Um, the Division of Wildlife is one of the primary owners of wetlands in the western part of Lake Erie, and those are important for migrating birds, whether they be waterfowl or shorebirds. They're also home to a lot of unique wetland wildlife species, such as river otters and muskrats and beavers, which are all making a comeback in Ohio. I've been interested in wildlife my whole life, and um, it was, I guess, lucky that when I went to college, they had a program in wildlife and I took some classes and realized that's where my passion was and I was went to the Pennsylvania State University where I received a bachelor's and master's degree. I worked in West Virginia for nine and a half years before coming to Ohio and it was uh, unique that I got to work in the forested mountains of West Virginia and then came to the agricultural areas in Northwest Ohio, but it's all been a great um, experience and always have worked with great people that are also very passionate and uh, everyone has, just doesn't do this as a profession, they do it as a, a way of life. Most people in the wildlife profession, regardless of whether they're in the wildlife management, fish management, law enforcement, information and education or business, uh, everybody is very passionate about what they do and as I said we do this professionally and also in our personal time. The ODNR Division of Wildlife is comprised of 425 professionally trained employees across the state and we have backgrounds in fish management, wildlife management, law enforcement, information education and business. Um, we have the state divided up into five districts, one in central Ohio and then four in each of the basically the corners of the state. And in those districts we're responsible for lands owned by the Division of Wildlife and we also have a wildlife officer in every county to interact with our customers. We work with school groups, park districts, towns, uh, anyone that is interested in wildlife, particularly private landowners, because Ohio is 95 percent privately owned. We realize working with private landowners is very important. We also work with our federal partners on federal properties in the state, um, but we are willing to work with anybody that is interested in wildlife in Ohio. And uh, Lake Erie provides a unique uh, opportunity for people that are interested in wildlife because we have the lake itself, we have the shoreline, and then we have the inland area that is affected by the lake. On the lake we get numerous migrating water birds. So it's not uncommon to see tens of thousands of water birds on the lake. Also, the, we are fortunate to be situated between the two flyways, the Atlantic Flyway and the Mississippi Flyway in Ohio, so we can get birds from further west or further east, which brings some uncommon birds to the state. Along the lake shore, the lake acts to mitigate the temperatures of the land, so in the fall, the shoreline usually stays warmer longer and then in the springtime it usually stays cooler longer. Also Lake Erie to some migrating species acts as a barrier so those species will move along the lakeshore either to the east or the west as they travel land and we're actually learning quite a bit about bat migration along Lake Erie now. Um, you think about bats, they're a flying mammal that are active at night, something very difficult for people to study. So we're learning a lot through radio telemetry studies on bat migrations and how the lake affects them. 
Um, also, birds travel a lot at night and we're doing some studies on those birds to see how the lake affects their migration. And then inland, we have a lot of unique features from the boreal forest in eastern Ohio all the way over to the wetlands in western Ohio and oak openings area. And those are all influenced by the lake and the past history of the lake from such features as a great black swamp that used to be a huge swamp that was drained for agriculture uh, in the western part of Lake Erie. Um, some typical wildlife species that might, people might see are white-tailed deer, wild turkeys, uh, your wetland fur bears such as muskrats, river otters, beavers, uh, the weasels. We also have a number of reptiles and amphibians that are unique along the lake such as the Blandings turtle um, and then some as we go into the western part of Lake Erie we see the blue spotted salamander complex um, so those are some common species that people can see if we go to eastern Ohio we're starting to see black bears moving into the state from Pennsylvania and West Virginia also some um, pine martin and fisher coming from Pennsylvania. So those species been, can be occasionally seen. We also, believe it or not, are getting porcupines coming back to Ohio in the eastern part of the state that are seen very rarely. So uh, as the forest matures it, along that border, we're starting to see some species that were once historically found in Ohio returning to the state. Some of the developments that have occurred, um, we definitely see more areas being taken up by urban sprawl, which is a concern. Also, potential impacts of wind energy, both along the shoreline and in the lake, as being studied how that may affect bird and bat migrations. And then also just uh, lots of people, just like wildlife, like to be along the lake during different times of the year. So there's a lot of development for recreational boating or second homes and things like that. So there is uh, development along the lake and also more intensified agriculture to feed the human population of impacting the landscape and water quality in, in the uh, Lake Erie Basin. Um, it's important that we maintain these wild areas all along the lake and it's important for people to realize it's a partnership, it's just not one agency that's doing it, it's everyone working in concert, whether it's private landowners, local, state, or federal governments, and it's important to support those organizations through items such as the sale of the federal duck stamp or state duck stamps or support the local nonprofit groups so that they continue their conservation mission uh, along Lake Erie and its habitats. Going forward in the future we have to look at a balance between what people need and what wildlife needs and make sure that we set aside habitat for wildlife all along the lake so that they have corridor to move along the lake and have protected areas and also um, you know it's everybody's role to realize the impact that they have on our natural environment and uh, take that in consideration as we live our daily lives. Ohio is in a unique position in that we're part of the Midwest, we're also part of the Great Lakes states, plus we're also located between the Mississippi and the Atlantic flyways. So we work with states and other agencies that are located in all of those different groups in both the United States and Canada, at local governments and state governments. So we're really lucky that we're kind of at a crossroads out of a number of different regional and national um, environments. And so Ohio is important. We kind of serve as a keystone to all of those. We have a little bit of the Midwest, a little bit of the East, a little bit of the North, and a little bit of the South. So we're really lucky to have a lot of unique habitats and wildlife across the state of Ohio.